What's going on Trooms? John John the Wise here and I got another Cyberpunk video for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about the Cyberpunk 2020 Chromebooks. I want to talk about their significance and how great they were for that RPG and hopefully we can expect the same kind of thing for Black Chrome. But before I get into that, make sure you guys join the Discord community. The link is in the description below. Make sure you guys follow me on social media at John John the Wise wherever there is social media. And subscribe to the podcast, Tabletop Cyberpunk, where I upload videos, audio versions of my videos and such. And of course, if you want to help this channel, a like, a subscribe, a comment, all those engagements help very much. But going to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John John the Wise helps the most. And I really do appreciate all of my supporters, all the positive comments I get. It really keeps me going. And thank you so much. And last but not least... First time ever, we got a sponsor. That's right, folks. We got a new sponsor for the channel, NFIL, D10s by NFIL. The affiliate link is in the description below. As you can see on screen, these are some beautiful D10s. This is a small business, a small crew of two people making these beautiful dice. They came to me and we are working on a partnership together. If you go through the affiliate link and buy any one of these beautiful D10s for yourself, I will get a little bit of a kickback as well. So make sure you go to NFIL and you support. So for those of you that are new, Cyberpunk 2020 was quite a time. And that's the RPG that I grew up playing. That's the first RPG that I ever played. And when we made characters for the first time, one of the many books that my game master threw at me were the Chromebooks. And they were these amazing magazine catalogs is what they felt like, especially for someone like me that was brand new to tabletop RPGs. I opened it up and there was this plethora of items and guns and vehicles and cyberware. And there wasn't just one or two, there's four of these things. It really was such a like overwhelming experience at first because all these things were thrust at me. But if you had been playing Cyberpunk 2020 since day one, all these amazing supplements just made your game better and better every time they came out. So what are the Chromebooks? The Chromebooks are just a catalog of cool stuff. There isn't really any better way to put it than that. It's items, gear, lifestyle, all kinds of stuff that have unique characteristics and can change your game significantly. The Chromebooks also have these amazing front covers that really tell a story in themselves. One of my favorite pieces, actually my favorite piece, is on the second Chromebook. Her name is Chrome Girl, and my wife made a beautiful piece that I hang up above me. Let's talk about some examples that are in these Chromebooks. And I'm going to pick some at random because I want to illustrate how cool it is that each one has its own story and can be significant in its own way. On page six of Chromebook one, we have the body weight. It is a life support device. It is the latest support option from body weight. When this package is connected to a cyber deck, a bio monitor watches the user's condition, controlling an IV drip for feeding and catheter to take care of bodily functions. Such a system is relatively small, about the size of a PC monitor, and can keep the body going for approximately 72 hours of constant work within the net and the weight is about 1.3 to 2 kilograms. So why is this significant? This can give inspiration for game masters to use with their net runners. They can give them a supposed scenario where they're gonna have to be deep diving into the net. And this is an idea that a game master can use to make sure that their net runner can stay safe. With the right general knowledge role, the net runner will know, okay, well, I can get a body weight life preservation system if we're really gonna deep dive, I'm gonna need one of those. And now the players are tasked with going and finding such a thing. On page 21 of Chromebook One, we have the Shiva, the Kundalini Roadworks Shiva. I mean, look at this thing. This is exactly the retro-futuristic thing that we love about cyberpunk. The Shiva is the first high-performance motorcycle entry from Kundalini. Following in the tracks of their highly successful personal and utility vehicles, the Shiva promises spectacular performance over the, for the e-buck. Rated at over 260 kilometers per hour on racetracks, its cyber-assisted suspension will keep you upright on rough surfaces at close to its theoretical maximum. Its acceleration is comparable to other speed bikes, and its handling belongs on a racetrack, not the street. But there it is, fast as a laser, blacker than night. 
And in really tiny writing, it has game notes. The Shiva is indeed highly maneuverable, reduced difficulty for all maneuvers by five points, and fast as well. So there's rules set to this. Of course, there's stats down there as well. tells you how much damage it can take. But imagine you're creating a character, you open up the Chromebook, and you come to this page and you see that motorcycle. You look at the price, you look at what it can do, and you start imagining to yourself, oh man, if I want to live that fantasy of having a cyberpunk character that's doing drive-bys on a Tron bike, I can basically do it with this Shiva. So let's go do some jobs so I can get this damn thing. Now let's look at some weapons, of course. The Kandachi Dragon on page 48 of the first Chromebook. It is a handheld flamer, provides destruction at your fingertips. The ignition must be activated one combat round before firing. Creates a 4 meter flame, doing 2d6 spread over 2 random body areas. First round. 1d6 to 1 area. Second round. Only hard armor or soft armors of SP15 plus will protect the target. All soft armors will be damaged two levels instead of one. It's an armor-piercing flamethrower that you can easily afford for under a thousand eddies. Of course, the artwork is beautiful as well, and it's another one of those things that game masters and players can use alike. I can imagine a big bad guy having this, or a lieutenant, or a sergeant, and I can imagine players using it as well. Maybe you're a simple man that has the big iron on your hip, and you want the Federated Arms 454DA Super Chief on page 52 of the first Chromebook. Originally conceived with handgun hunters in mind, the Super Chief is a double action revolver finished in stainless steel and chambered for the 454 Kasul, a cut down big game cartridge specifically designed for large animals. A big success with people who like the challenge of handgun hunting, this weapon has also proven itself as a real man stopper when the situation warrants. It's also a very popular nomad weapon. And of course, this weapon does the Cyberpunk 2020 damage of 4d6 plus 3. That's where I got the inspiration of adding additional damage to the damage die, like a plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. Because a lot of the weapons in Cyberpunk 2020 had that in their rule set. But this is amazing. It's a hand cannon. It's 375 eddies, so it's super affordable. You can have it on the side of your hip, and you can bring down basically anything with it. It does a minimum damage of 7, which is pretty nuts, because you only need a little more to be able to penetrate a lot of armors out there. Now lastly, I'm going to mention some fashion wear on page 63 of the first Chromebook, the Takanaka Exec Line, Power in Simplicity. I mean, look at this artwork. It's that perfect late 80s, early 90s artwork that we've seen. It's very reminiscent of that Patrick Nagel style artwork that we've seen before. And if you can see in that little column there, we have an itemized list of all the things you can buy within the line. Most notably, the full armored top coat that has an SP-16 or an opera cloak that is armored SP-16. Which, you know, don't worry about the SPs. This is Cyberpunk 2020. Things were a little bit different back then. But as the image shows, it's the samurai warrior in the business suit. This guy is like the executive hero. He's the guy that all execs want to be within the Arasaka Corporation. So if you're making that type of character or you're making that type of enemy, you can really deck them out in this amazing kind of fashion wear. And as the last few lines say, no gimmicks, no fancy synth cloth, nothing extraneous. There's no need for any of that. Anyone who can see knows that it's the person in these clothes that counts. Now you can see these are all vastly different items, but each one of them tells a different story for your character. They all have a use for them, and they all have a story within themselves as an item. And that's what the Chromebooks can do. By the way, this was only one Chromebook. It was the first Chromebook. It's not the second, third, fourth, Black Hands, Pacific Rim, Heavy Metal, or any of the other cool supplements that we had in Cyberpunk 2020. The best part of the Chromebooks was the fact that it would help you for your character customization. Whether you wanted mechanical upgrades such as weaponry and cyberware and stuff like that, or if you wanted some narrative changes on what kind of gear you're wearing, your fashion, your looks, and all the generic kind of items that you can use throughout your game to make it more interesting narratively. What ended up happening is at the end of session zero, we were sitting there for three, four hours 
trying to figure out exactly what kind of character we want to make. It doesn't sound ideal, but actually it's a lot of fun because you're like, I don't want to miss anything. I want to make the most unique cyberpunk character I can. And you're allowed to do that with these Chromebooks with the vast array of things that are out there. Plus, on top of that, you also get upgrades for the rest of the campaign. You might find something in there that you don't have the money for or, or anything like that, but it's something you can work up to. Improvement points are all good, but that cold, hard eddies is what you need to get the cool cyberware and the cool weapons. The uniqueness of your character knows no limits with the Chromebooks. You have so many things that you can add to your character that by the time you get to the end game, your character has completely changed. And for Game Masters, it's a bunch of stuff that you can have your characters work for. Maybe they didn't really care about the aerial vehicles in the Chromebooks, but it's something you can introduce to them and you can tell them, go to this page at this page number. That's the stats for the vehicle that you're driving. Every single supplement was always jam-packed with something, but the Chromebooks always felt like it was a catalog for you and your character. It's like you're sitting at the doctor's office and you look to your right and you see these magazines on the rack. You pick it up and you find all these amazing things that are gonna change your life. It made you fall in love with the world even more because you realize, oh my gosh, there's all these amazing things in, in it. What else can be in it? What, what things can I come up with? And as a game master, it would give you inspiration for the cool things that you can do. And it would give you rules for the items that you're using. As a game master, you are inspired to make your own items using the kind of inspiration that the book will give you, whether it's the rules that it sets out or the functionality of an item, or even the pricing of an item can give you an idea of what something similar to it would be costing. For those of you that have already played Cyberpunk 2020 for many years, you know that this is nothing new. The Chromebooks were amazing, the Black Hands Guide and all those other supplements were amazing as well. When they came out, they changed the game significantly because it gave so many new possibilities for game masters and players alike. That's why Black Chrome is something that we are really, really hoping to see very soon. We understand the significance that it can have in Cyberpunk Red is very much the same way. The Cyberpunk Red Core rulebook is a great way to play the game, and we've been playing the game with it since then. The many DLCs that James and I have been talking about on our show as well have really injected into the game as well. But the Chromebooks is something special because the items within it they all tell a story to themselves individually. And this is going to be something that we're all excited to see. And that's the idea of this video. I wanted to give you guys my insight on the significance of the Chromebooks in Cyberpunk 2020, because I think that we're going to be seeing the same kind of significance in Cyberpunk Red. You're going to have longer session zeros that are more fun, and you're going to have more unique characters and NPCs than you've ever had before. At least that's the expectation. Now, if you can't wait for Black Chrome and you want to get your hands on it, I recommend getting the earlier Chromebooks from Cyberpunk 2020. There's a lot of items in there with a little bit of moving around. You can make it work for Cyberpunk Red very easily. And who knows, maybe we'll see them return in, in Black Chrome, in Rust Chrome, or any other Chrome that we see in the future. Here's hoping. All right, Chooms, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. We'll see you guys on the next one.